G'day ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Draw with Jazza, I'm Jazza and this is a video tutorial series where we're going through and making a flash animation from start to finish. So, so far in previous tutorials, we've set up the file and created an animatic, we have created some character rigs, uh, we've created a background and now we're up to facial animation, uh, things like lip syncing and doing the expressions animated to fit the voices. So this is what we ended up with in terms of our character rig and background. So this is the file I have for that. Um, I won't recap everything in detail about that, but you can see that there. And so going back to a version of the file where I have everything laid out <laughs> with the animation and the camera, what I've done is I've created a new layer and hitting F7, you can see that with this new keyframe, I can go over here where it says, uh, in the properties panel where it says label, I can give it a name. And so if I write um, all, you can see this little flag with the word all has appeared. Now, what I'm going to be doing is using this to create little uh, points on this timeline to signify where the camera is. And I'll get to why I'm doing this in a moment. This is just in preparation for how I'm going to do the facial animation. So rather than just typing all, uh, that makes it a valid codable um, frame label, which I don't want, because it means that the uh, the co it's going to be looking for repetitions in the code, and it's going to be all weird anyways. So what you do is you add two forward slashes, hit enter, and then it turns it into this double forward slash all, which makes it irrelevant for code. And so... What I've done is so I've created this flame frame label for all here where the camera changes. I'm going to create a new one. I'll call it double slash uh, and the characters names are Matt, P, uh, Greg and Petey. So this one zoomed in on Matt slash Greg and I'll hit enter there. So I've created a label for Matt, Greg and I, what I've done, so I've already done this and I'll, I'm just showing you how I did it, is I went through wherever there's a camera change, like here, it zoomed in just to Greg, so I've created a label, double slash, Greg, hit enter. So I've done that for the whole thing. So I'll close that now because the reason I show you this is I've created a separate file just with the characters, no background, no uh, loader, nothing like that, just so when you download the reference files, you have this in isolation. And you can see that if I go through here, I've got all my labels. Now I'm going to show you why I've done this. It's simply because in this file, I don't have the camera. And when you do the facial animation, sometimes uh, the person who's talking is off camera and you don't want to have to animate them when you're not going to be using that animation you want to make sure to save the time so i've already lip synced both matt and greg these two characters here and so i'm going to prepare this character here on the right pd i'm going to prepare him uh for facial animation and then i'm going to do a short segment of facial animation so I've, i'll show you a short sample of what i've got so far with these two characters oh hey guys what's up Oh, so what uh, computer games have you been playing lately? I, p I play Minecraft. Oh. Okay, so if I go inside this character, Matt, and zoom in and enter his head symbol, you can see that this is all the animation that I've got set up. So hiding everything but the head base and the mouth. Oh, hey guys, what's up? Oh, so what uh, computer games have you been playing lately? I've got the mouth animation. Then on top of that, I've got the eyes, which... Oh, hey guys, what's up? It has some slight animation. Oh, so what uh, computer games have you been... And then on top of that, I have pupils. Now, the trick with pupils, and I'll say this early, and I will reiterate it later when I'm working on uh, Petey's eye animation, is short, sharp movements. And sometimes it's nice to break up a bit of a still moment with just a quick little eye flicker from one place to another. Think of who they're talking to. If they're thinking, if the character you're animating is thinking, have them kind of look away every now and then in contemplation rather than constantly looking at who they're talking to. Good at animate their faces if they're really reacting to a world around them. Oh, hey guys, what's up? Oh, so what uh, computer games have you been playing lately? So you'll notice his eyes dart around a little bit. So when he walks up and he says, what's up? Guys, what's up? He looks down then up because there are two people there and I think he's probably looking down and up to both of them to acknowledge them both. You know, so you kind of got to keep those little things in mind. And then finally we have the brows which move with the expression. So if his voice raises in pitch. Oh, hey guys, what's up? 
I normally raise the eyebrows. So that's how uh, it ended up looking. And I'm going to go from scratch to show you how to prepare a character like this guy for facial animation. So I'm going to zoom into 800% and I'm going to get ready to do this. So the face as I've got it set up has quite a number of layers and we'll go through these one by one. We have the head base, we have the graphic of a mouth, we have a graphic of eyes, graphic pupils, brows, glasses, and we have a nose, which is not a graphic. It's just a locked layer. And then we have the graphic of the hair. So I'm going to be using a program, well, not a program, an extension to Flash called Keyframe Caddy. Now, what you can do is go to cloudkid.com. So let's bring up a browser here. Cloudkid.com. I believe this is the correct website. Yes. And you go to tools and keyframe caddy. This thing is phenomenal. Now you just download it, you click download, you install it, and then you uh, open the flash extensions things, you install it as a flash extension, close flash. Uh, you might need to restart your computer. I haven't had to, but some people will have had slight problems with making it happen. That aside, uh, you restart flash and this is how it works. If I click on any of these graphics that I've shown you, say the mouth, and I hit load thumbnails, you can see this little mouth thumbnail here on the left. Okay, so what it's done is if I enter the graphic symbol, you can see I've got one frame and this is the image. It's loaded every single frame inside of this graphic as a thumbnail. And if I click it on here, it loads it into that timeline. Okay, so I know this is sounding a little bit weird, but basically in theory, what happens is if I create a new keyframe by hitting F7, and enable my onion skin so I can see the frame before, get all my brush settings how I want them and begin drawing another mouth. Let's say like this. So it's a slightly more open mouth. Let's draw the jaw. So now that I've got a second mouth, I'll just paint the teeth in and I hop out of the clip and with the graphic selected, hit load thumbnails. There you go. You can see the second mouth there and I can just by clicking alternate between those two. And so I use this tool in animation all the time. This thing has saved me so much time and so much stress uh, just by being able to completely streamline the process. So. I highly recommend you get it. Otherwise, you'll have to do things a little bit more manually, um, which is still doable. But that aside, my next task is to go through and create the mouth shapes that I intend to use. And so I will uh, outline just roughly now what they usually are for me, because I usually have a, a cycle, uh, a specific order of mouth shapes I, I work on. So the first one is closed. The next is slightly more open like that. The next is even more open with the teeth. These are both with teeth. Uh, the next is even more open with teeth. Like this. Okay. And then I bring it down small again. Where it's uh, this time the mouth is open. More open. Just showing the top teeth more open, even more open. With each time I'm creating a new one, I'm hitting F7. Uh, and I've forgotten something, which I usually keep in mind, is that um, when you draw teeth, the top teeth never move. See, I haven't, haven't been true to that, have I? The top teeth never move because the only thing that moves when a mouth is talking 
uh, is the bottom jaw. So the top lip can move, the bottom jaw can move, but the top teeth always are constant. And that's something to keep in mind because otherwise your mouths can tend to look a little bit weird. So you want to make sure that the edge of the teeth is the same place. The line that divides the teeth is the same place. And that when you have open mouths or anything like that, that the uh, top teeth are in the same place. Okay, so we have more open variations of the mouth with the jaw dropping. And then it's always good to have a few really extreme ones. You might not use them often, but it makes a difference when you're animating something a little more extreme to be able to use some extreme ones. So I'm going to throw in a few really extreme ones because I know that in the course of this animation, this guy ends up yelling really loud or getting really worked up. Okay, so these, this is just my reference for now. Now let's have him start putting his mouth in more of an O shape. Like this. I shouldn't spend too long on this because I'm going to do the refined version in a moment. Okay, and then finally we have the uh, two last ones that I use are the uh, F shape, as in with the bottom lip being bitten, and then finally the L shape with the tongue being pushed against the top teeth. So sometimes I like to do two variations of that shape, a, a smaller one like that, and then a more wide open one like that. Okay, so these are all of the mouth variations that I'm going to be using. So the next thing I'm going to be doing is going through and creating a refined version of each of those. I'm just going to wireframe and lock my reference, that red layer that I drew, and put it underneath the layer I'm going to work on now, which is this one. And I'll speed up the process so you don't get bored. Okay, so I finished doing those mouth shapes and I can go through here. You can see that I've done it so that the color and line work is all finalized. So I'm happy with that. Now, if I hop out of the clip and hit load thumbnails, you can see that all of those frames show here individually and I can pop them onto the face. Now, there's a little bit of a problem here with the head base in that it doesn't cover the entirety of the area behind the neck, oh, sorry, behind the jaw. So I'm just gonna extend this. There we go. And, and get rid of the end there. Oh, the little tweaks. Okay, lock. And let me test by loading a bunch of these mouths. Okay. Okay, I'm happy with that. So. The last thing I'm going to do before I actually animate the head 
is uh, do the same for a few other areas of the head. So the eyebrows and the eyeballs themselves. So not the glasses, I'll hide those. So the eyeballs and the eyebrows and uh, even a couple in the pupils. So I'll just skip ahead, so you, I'll, I'll fast forward it as you, you know, you can watch. It's the same sort of process as doing the mouth, kind of preparing beforehand the, the kind of um, shapes and expressions that I intend on using, and, uh, and then we will go from there and begin the animation process. Okay, so I've finished preparing the inside frames of the other graphics here. If I enter the eyes, you can see I've got the eyelids going uh, up and down both the top and bottom and then closing in together. And then I always do a larger version of the eyes themselves. I have the pupils, which just have them kind of dilating. I have the eyebrows and I tend to just animate the eyebrows as one smooth sort of motion. Uh, in, into all the different eyebrow expressions I could possibly use. And as I hit any of these into load thumbnails in Keyframe Caddy, um, you can see that they load there and it makes things really easy and ready to animate. So I'm ready to go now. So in preparation for animation, I need the audio to animate to. So in the main timeline, I'm gonna select all of the frames, including my cues and the audio. I'm gonna hit Control Alt C to copy them and enter the head and on a new layer with a keyframe selected hit Control alt v to paste all of those frames. I'm going to go out to the end here and on all these layers bring it out by hitting F5 as my shortcut and I've got oh, he I've got this guy's face ready to animate. So in uh, preparing to animate it I uh, follow my cues so with all in this section here up to frame 53 I can see that uh, he will be on camera and I rather than just doing facial animation when he talks you want to animate them to kind of express and, and uh, interact throughout so let me just kind of take this to fit well okay so let's get started Let's have his eyes looking down at who he was talking to before. Oh, oh, hey guys. And as this other guy walks on, let's have the pupils move fairly swiftly up. Create a classic tween. And I usually use the ease and bring it into easing out. Hey guys. Okay. And normally when I move the pupils up like that, I like to have the eyebrows move up as well to kind of, you know, if I'm looking down, then looking up my eyelids kind of, and my eyebrows kind of react in that way as well. So with the thumbnails loaded on the eyebrows, as he looks up, I want to which one? I'll go that one, then that one, then the normal one. Oh, guys. Oh. Okay. And uh, I'm going to select the eyeballs. And from the beginning, I want to have the upper eyelid down. There we go. So as he looks up, guys, he's quite indifferent. Oh, hey guys. What's... So this guy, this character in general, he is a bit of a snobby sort of character. He's a bit of an elitist gamer. Guys, what's up? Okay. So in this next shot. You can see my cue here says Matt slash Greg. So in this entire frame span, I don't need to worry about a thing. Uh, same as here where it says Greg. So this guy's not on camera. But here where it says all, I need to start worrying about him again. So what happens here? Oh, choice, eh, bro? Okay. So in this period of time when he's not talking, let's just give him a little bit of movement. Have him look down at Greg swiftly and then look back up because it's a conversation between two people. Oh, choice, hey, bro. And let's um, have his 
eyelids slightly more open and as he looks down, close them a bit. And then as he looks back up, open them a bit again. Oh, choice, hey, bro. There you go. So that gives him a bit of motion there. Oh, choice, hey, bro. What about you, Petey? Okay, so now we're about to talk. So when I do facial animation with full uh, talking and lip syncing, I don't worry about anything until the mouth is done. So I just can hide those if I want to remove the distraction. Load the thumbnails of my mouth and let's check this out. What have we got? I love Dota 2. I love Dota 2. So let's open the mouth a little bit. I... I love... Okay, so we've got the tongue next. L, I love. I love. Okay, let's drag these forward. So you can see that I'm quite quickly adding these frames and uh, it's quite second nature to me. I've been doing this for a long time and you know, I'll move, change, frame, move, that, all that. And I have shortcuts in my keyboard to kind of move forward and backwards between frames. So you kind of got to fami familiarize yourself with the process. I love. 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 I love the. And we've got the. Do. T. A. Uh, two. I love Dota two. <laughs> okay, let's see how this looks. I love Dota two. <laughs> okay, I prefer. If the mouth were like that. So you kind of got to play it by ear. You kind of replay and replay just to make sure things fit time wise, mm -hmm. expression wise. I love Dota 2. Yeah. Two. Yeah. It's. It's a. Uh, it's a. Uh, it's really quite good. It's a. Uh, it's a. Uh, have the mouth open with the teeth closed. Uh. It's uh, it's uh, it's it's uh, it's it's two, it's uh, it's it's really, let's see what this looks like. It's uh, it's really quite cool. Why? <laughs> so you're gonna kind of sound it out. You gotta. It's really quite good. I often uh, move my mouth in the expression of what I'm animating before or after I get to the frames, just to kind of see what it feels like in my mouth, what position my mouth goes to. It's uh, really quite good. You know, kind of you can feel in your mouth what shape you're making, and you kind of emulate that on the character. I love Dota 2. It's uh, it's really quite good. Okay, yeah. I'll drag these frames forward a little bit. Quite good. 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 Okay. I love Dota 2. It's uh it's really quite good. There we go. So I've done a section of mouth animation and I think that fits really well. So the next thing I do is make my eyes visible. And let's figure out how we want his eyes to be animated. I love Dota 2. So in this bit he's talking quite haughtily. I love Dota 2. You know, he like kind of He's a bit high and mighty about this game. I love Dota 2. I love Dota. So I'm thinking maybe have his eyes closed for a short moment. So on this frame, I might have them go like that, then close. I love Dota. And then have them reopen again. Oops, and keep the upper eyelids. I love Dota 2. It's... And then lower the upper eyelids. It's, uh, it's really quite... And then on good, because there's a slight exaggeration on the word there, I'll pop the it's eyelids up. Quite good. There we go. Okay, so I'm fairly happy with that. Let's watch this. I love Dota 2. It's, uh, it's really quite good. There we go. Now let's bring in the pupils. 
So where is he looking? Well, first of all, when the eye uh, when the eyelids close, I need to make the eye uh, the pupil disappear. So I'll just delete between these two frames. I, I love Dota too. There we go. So we've got a smooth eye a brow eye sorry eyelid shutting a blink. In other words, I love Dota too. Too. And then we'll have him look slightly more distant it's, uh, to the left. It's, uh, it, it's really, really quite good. Good. Okay. So I'm happy with that. And then let's mess with the eyebrows. I love... Let's have the eyebrows raised slightly. I love Dota. And then bring them down again. I love Dota too. It's... It's, uh, it's really quite. And have the eyebrows pop up and down on his exaggerated moment of speech there. I love Dota too. It's, uh, it's really quite good. Okay, so I'm really happy with how that turned out. Let's bring the glasses back in and look at it in context. 400% zoomed. Let's zoom out and let's watch the whole thing of what we've got so far. So I'll go to the beginning, and let's watch the interaction. Oh, hey guys, what's up? Oh, so what uh, computer games have you been playing lately? I play Minecraft. Oh, choice, eh, bro? What about you, Petey? I love Dota 2. It's, uh, it's really quite good. Okay, so I'm really happy with how that turned out. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. I'll make sure to have a uh, finalized lip synced version of this animation in the description. So I'll finish animating this guy and, uh, and you can check it out and see how that turned out uh, for yourself. I'll play the whole thing from the beginning, uh, keeping in mind though that this guy on the right's facial animation isn't complete because we've just done all that I've done so far. But you can see these two guys interact and you can see how I've kept them moving f fairly constantly, even if they're not talking. Uh, I've also animated their head in preparation for what their body will be doing, even though it's not happening at the moment. So there will be times, like for instance, at the very end, this guy on the left, his face goes like this. Uh, that's because he will be being punched in the face. But I haven't animated that yet. So I've just prepared all of the facial animation. There's a bit in the middle of the animation where this guy picks his nose and you'll see he'll happily be looking down cross-eyed and smiling you know <clears throat> so things like that you've got to kind of anticipate where things are going to be going and prepare all of that with the lip syncing and also these cues have been very useful because I know where to animate and where not to animate so I'll watch through that oh hey guys what's up oh so what uh, computer games have you been playing lately I play Minecraft oh choice hey eh, bro what about you Petey I love Dota 2 it's uh it's really quite good Oh, yeah? Yes, you play on a team of five against another team of five, and you defend your ancient from the enemy team. Yeah, from what I hear, it's quite You the select a hero from a vast pool of champions, each with a handful of unique abilities and a limited time to earn money, which can be sped up by last-hitting enemies. Your hero's abilities are gained and improved as you level up, the cap of which is level 25. So you're pretty into Dota 2 there. There are three channels between the team bases which have towers defending them. Each base spits out troops which you cannot control. It's incredibly difficult to understand proper strategy and tactics, and the people who play it are often overpassionate and easily aggravated. There are many champions who are difficult to learn and sort through, multitudes of items to buy and sell with both active and passive abilities, and a courier mechanic to transfer them back and forth from the home base to your variant position on the field. Battle lines constantly shift, choke points are vital to understand, and the tension is as high as the burning heat of the eternal flames of hell. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. So it's, uh, it's kind of like League of Legends? <laughs> I play Minecraft. There you go. So you can see how that's kind of played out. You'll notice that a lot of this animation is the guy talking who I haven't animated yet, but these guys are constantly reacting, kind of interacting with each other with their eyes, their expressions are changing. Also, the camera does move around and the scene kind of moves around a bit in a way that keeps things a little more interesting, you know, with their expressions, with this guy picking his nose, with uh, this guy who will eventually move across and be in this guy's face. Uh, but in anticipation for that, all we have to work on is the faces and the lip syncing. And I hope this tutorial has taught you a bit. I've enjoyed doing it. And until next time, ladies and gentlemen, I'll see you later. 
Thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you enjoy my videos. You can download the reference files from this tutorial by clicking the link in the description. And remember to share any art, animation or game you make on Newgrounds.com. Until next time, see you later.